I want, uh, Father, we thank you for today in Jesus' name. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in this format. We thank you for the privilege. We thank you for this year. We thank you for all those testimonies we have heard today. Thank you for the family of uh, Solomon that you are bringing together. We thank you for the family of Sister Bridget that you've already brought together. And we thank you for many for the birthday of Zoe. Lord, we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, uh, we just want to thank you for all you are doing. Father, we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that next year it shall be greater with greater testimony. Amen. And we bless your holy name. Father, Lord, as you celebrate your birthday, uh, we ask that you give us a specific word that we be a blessing in the life of every year. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord once again. Um, I believe you are hearing me and uh, it is well in Jesus' name. All right. Um, can we open our Bible to the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38? The Acts of Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38. Uh, that is where the word of today will be coming from. And, and, and I read. He said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Bible told us, then the Bible made us to know that Jesus went, the, in the summary of Jesus' ministry, Bible said he went about doing good. Press of the devil. And to confirm it, they said, why was he doing it? Because God was with him. I pray God will be with you in Jesus' name. And Bible told us that we will do what Jesus did and greater things that Jesus did, we will do. And I pray the same shall be your testimony in Jesus' name. So the title of today's message is what I will just uh, say is Christmas is about doing good. Christmas is about doing good. Uh, but before I go for that, I want us to know that the whole essence of our Christianity, of the expectations of God about we that are Christian, it is not just to be hearers alone, but to be doers of what we are hearing. You cannot just say, oh, I hear, I hear, I hear. You must also be able to say, I do, I do, I do. So until you do, God is not impressed with us. You know, there's a cartoon which I've shared with many people. A student was in exam hall and was very angry. And the anger was that when this teacher doesn't trust us, this teacher has no trust in us, we don't know what is the problem of this teacher. He said, when the teacher was teaching us, he asked us, do we understand? And we said, yes, we do. He asked us again, he said, do we understand? Yes, we do. So why are you giving us exam? If you believe us, what we don't do, we understand what, uh, what you are teaching us. So, God, you don't just hear alone, you must do. So, if you have, it's not enough, you must be able to prove to God that you are hearing. And the way to prove to God is that you are, what he said you have is by doing it. And God will make us not just to be hearers, but to be doers in Jesus' name. In James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verses 22 to 23, James 1, 22 to 23, he said, Be you doers of the world, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. He said, If any be hearer of the world, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. So, God is saying, if you are just a hearer and not a doer of God's word, Bible says, just like you see yourself in the mirror, you look at yourself, and once you move away from your mirror, you don't see yourself again. So, it says, we are deceiving ourselves. And I pray in the name of Jesus, we will not be deceiving. In, in, in Jesus' name. And the Bible also makes us to know that it is only 
the doers that are just before God, not just the hearers. It is only the doers that are before God that are recognized, that are accepted, that are just. So if you say you are just, but you are not a doer of the word, you are just deceiving yourself. In Romans 2.13, Romans 2.13, he said, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. It is the doer. So you can't just claim I'm born again, I am saved. You must do what born again people do. And I pray God will help us to be doers and not hearers in Jesus' name. The last thing I want to say, even when we talk about righteousness, you know, it, to, to, before you can say you are righteous, before you can confidently say you are righteous, you must also be a doer of righteousness. You must also be a doer of righteousness. 4 John 3, 7, 4 John 3, 7 tells us, he said, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So, don't just say you, are, you cannot judge the righteousness by word of mouth. Yes, it's good to be righteous. It is true. But word of mouth is not enough. There's more to righteousness than word of mouth. There's a doing part of righteousness. So, our Christianity is not just about hearing, it's about doing. So, Jesus went about doing. And we're going to look at our life of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he was not just a hearer, but a doer of what he was, uh, uh, of what he was preaching. I mean, he was the one preaching it, but you could see that Jesus was not just preaching, but he was also doing in, in uh, Acts 10, 38, that we've read, but I would get us to know that Jesus' lifestyle was a life, a lifestyle of doing what he's preaching. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. The question is, are you like Jesus? Are you doing good, just like Jesus did? And, you know, we're also made to know that not only that he was preaching and teaching, he was also doing what he was preaching. He was doing it for everybody to see. He didn't just preach, he also did. And God will help us to be doer of what we are preaching or proclaiming in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. He says, The former treaty have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. You see, they put do before teach. He was doing it, showing example, and he was also teaching it. When he was teaching them about humility, he took water and started washing the feet of the disciples. He also had to go and baptize himself so that uh, people can see. So everything, almost everything that Jesus showed example. And so when he was preaching, you know, I'm sure it will help his message to run faster. So we as Christians, we must be like Jesus. We cannot just be hearers, we must be doers. You know, Bible told us he went all over the place, healing, preaching, and you know, preaching and doing everything. So we as Christians, we have to be like our father. We have to be like Jesus, who went about doing good. We can write down some scriptures, maybe Matthew 12, 12 to 14. Matthew 12, 14, sorry, 14 to 15. Matthew 12, 14 to 15. Matthew 12, 14 to 15. It's, you know, when they were, they, because of, okay, because of what Jesus was doing, they, yeah, okay, what of, because of Jesus, in the, the word they were saying, is because of, the good that Jesus was doing, his life was threatened. You know, because of the good he was doing. He didn't, so, and that didn't stop him to still not do good. You know, they planned that, oh, this man, he, he had somebody to stretch forth his hand, and they felt we have to kill this guy before he made friends. But he didn't stop him from preaching. He continued going about doing good. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So you could see yeah, another example that Jesus, he traveled almost 20, I don't know whether it's 12 hours or 24 hours, from one city to another city, just because of one widow whose son had died. He went because he wanted to do good. He traveled, because, in fact, by the time he got to the town, Naim, 
Bible told us that they, he was like clay because they were already carrying the dead body for burial. They were already on the way to burial. They were by the gate before Jesus met them because he was traveling from another place and it took him almost to the next day to get to where it is. That's how doing good was to Jesus. He doesn't mind traveling hours just to do good. So Jesus was not just preaching it, he was also doing it. And you see, you know, we can rather look 10, 10 to 15, Luke chapter 7, sorry, Luke chapter 7, verses 10 to 15. Luke chapter 7, verses 10 to 15. You see that Jesus traveled long distance just to go and do good, just for one person. You know, he had to inconvenience himself. You could see another example that the madman of Gadara in the book of Mark chapter 5, you can write Mark 5, 1 to 9, and Mark 5, 1 to 9. You could see our Lord Jesus Christ, he took, if you read from chapter 4, you see that he went through a turbulent water. He risked his life, he risked the life of his disciples through turbulent water. Why? Because of just one madman. You know, because of one madman, he wanted to do good. I mean, you could have said, okay, we have done ministry this night, let us all rest. In the middle of the night, he said, <coughs> he said, we are going to the other side. He said, we are going to the other side. And he took all his disciples, and there was storm on the way. But that didn't stop him from going to do good. So Jesus, no condition, no weather condition, no snow can stop him from doing good. Jesus was a good man. And when I say he was a good man, it's not just by word of mouth, but by, by the action that he took. He was doing good. So, like you said, Christmas is about doing good. And the question I want to ask us, are you like Jesus? Because you say I belong to Jesus, are you like Jesus who would travel hours just because of one person? He doesn't say, okay, you know, the woman widow was just a widow. I mean, because of a madman, he put his uh, disciples, he risked their life on a, a, on a water journey. But he went to just to save one madman that was that need to be saved. And I pray God will help us to be good people and be doing good people in uh, doing good things in Jesus. You see another example of Jesus risking his personal reputation, personal integrity. Bible said he needed to go to Galilee. You know, and normally when we go and look at the map, you understand what I'm talking about. He needed to go to uh, Galilee, but he is not bad in Samaria. You know, the way from Judea to Galilee is a straight journey that could have taken by water. But he stopped on the way. Just stop out. If you look at the map of this uh, area in that time, you will understand what I'm saying. So he doesn't have any reason. He could have a genuine excuse. And Jesus was tired. Though, to make matter worse, Jesus was tired. And why did Jesus make this sacrifice? Is because of a woman who has been involved in fornication. Because of one woman that is in fornication and he wanted to do good for that woman. Jesus risked his reputation because when his disciples came to him and they, 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 they saw him with this woman, they were like, what is Jesus doing with this woman? What is Jesus doing with this woman? How can Jesus be, be seen? A man that is a holy man seen to be talking to a sinner like this. So be good. You know, Jesus was ready to identify with people other people would not identify with just to be able to do good. So the question I ask us again is, are we good people? And may God help us to be like Jesus in everything. So if there's anything you want to take home today as a result of uh, Christmas, is are we going to be like Jesus? Are we going to be doing good? Because you can see that Jesus did good. It doesn't matter the distance. It doesn't matter the weather condition. It doesn't matter the class or position. It doesn't matter that, oh, you have to be, oh, maybe because this person is a sinner, I have an excuse not to do. No, Jesus was not like that. He was doing good to everybody. We can write down John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 3 to 4, uh, verse 27 and verse 32 to 33. John chapter 4, verses 3 to 4, verse 27, 32 to 33. Or on the other hand, we can just read the whole of John chapter 4. We will get the, you know, the full story. Just because of one woman, 
And this woman is a woman with very questionable heart. So Jesus didn't mind to risk his heaven to come, to risk his ministry. I mean, in a time that we are living in now, it's, it's, it's where any little more can damage somebody's uh, reputation completely. Jesus didn't mind just to do good. And may God give us the grace to be like Jesus in the name of Jesus. So to sum this part up, the fruit of your Christianity is what you do. Bible says, by their fruits, we shall know them. So if you are a true Christian, can we look at your record and say, oh, you are doing good. Or it's just you and your family, or just you and you alone. So can we say that, can we check your record and see that you have been doing good? And this is your good. It's not only to people that you like, just to everybody. We need to learn from the life of Jesus. We need to be like Jesus. Because Bible says the hearers is not only the people that is just, it is the doers that are just before God. And the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. I want us to know three things about doing good. Some few things that the Bible tells us about doing good. Number one, it is a sin for you as a child of God. It is a sin for you to know to do good and not do it. That's how serious it is before God. So when I say Jesus went about doing good, it is a sin for you to know something good to do and you don't do it. James 4, 17. James 4, 17. James 4, 17. He said, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. So it is a sin for a child of God to refuse to do good. You know, in this end time, in this time when things look all over the place, COVID-19, all manners of thought, things are going on, Bible encourages us to do two things. Two things. Number one, trust God. Number two, do good. Number one, trust God. Number two, do good. Number one, trust God <coughs> and do good. In Ecclesiastes 3, 11. Ecclesiastes 3, 11. He said, if he had made everything beautiful in his time, also he has set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work of the Lord from beginning to the end. Then verse 12, I know that there is no good in them, but if a man to rejoice and do good in life. No matter what is happening, God has everything under control. Just see, make sure that you are doing good. Don't say, oh, because the situation doesn't favor you right now, you are going to stop doing good. You know, if, they, if Joseph, when he was in prison, if he had stopped doing good, he would have died in prison. Because even though he was in problem in prison, he was still helping other people to interpret their own dream. His own dream has already been locked up in prison. His own dream since he was never going to come back. But even in that prison, he was able to help other people to interpret their dream, and that helped his own dream to come to pass. So you have to be doing good. You look at the uh, uh, first Samuel 30 when uh, David was running after the people that took all his family and everything. Bible told us at the end of the day that he recovered without faith. But one thing that we didn't uh, we should note in that story, we can go and read first Samuel 30 in our time. It's not among what I wanted to preach today. You find out that on the way they saw a man that was fainting. He was hungry. He was is the he was part of the team, but they didn't know. But they saw him. He was almost going to die. He was hungry. He was starving. That's why his people abandoned him. But David said, no, 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 no. We have to feed this guy. They fed him. They gave him water. They gave him food, and he was full. He was full, and because of that, David. That guy that David saved his life was the one that gave them the secret that helped David to recover everything he has lost. So, doing good, doing good, you never know who you are helping. And if you read that story further, 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 you find out that after they have won the war, they won, they got all their goods back, and they got much more than their goods. Bible told us, because when they were running after these people, Bible says some of them were tired. So David said, okay, if you are tired, stay. So when they came back, the people said, no, only the people that went will share. That the people that were tired and didn't follow must not go. David said, no way, it's not going to happen. That we must share it equally with everybody. 
there is a great virtue in doing good. The question is, are you like Jesus who are doing good? You know, if there's anything that we want to know about David, it's a man that is doing good. Psalm 37. Psalm 37 verse 3. Psalm 37 verse 3. It says, talk trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land. Verily, thou shalt be fed. I don't know what COVID-19 is saying to you. I don't know what your situation is right now. But two things I'm advising you today. Trust in God and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Just like Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ did. And then in Psalm 34, 34 verse 14, Psalm 34 verse 14, he said, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So avoid sin. And then again, he said, do good. That is the advice of David. No matter what David was going through, he was still doing good along the way. No matter what he's going through, he was still doing good along the way. Let there be something that we will say about you, that you are doing good. Even our Lord Jesus Christ advised us in Matthew 5, 16, Matthew chapter 5, 16, he said, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What is the good work you are doing? What is the good work that the light of God must shine upon? So we need to ask yourself, we have need to ask ourselves, am I doing good? And what good am I doing? What good is it going to shine that for the world to see? And I pray the Lord will help us to do good in Jesus' name. I also want to know, maybe we can write down James chapter 2, 14 to 17, James chapter 2, 14 to 17, that faith without good works Faith without good works is nothing before God. James 2, 14, maybe 14 to 20. James without good work, it is nothing before God. Faith without good works, it is nothing before God. Don't just say, I believe, I believe, I believe. You must also be able to do what you believe. Do what you believe. And God will help us in Jesus' name. You know, in the Bible, the, the, some people have misinterpreted false Timothy 6 10. A lot of times they will say money is the root of evil. No, I would say the love of money is the root of evil. And some people have also interpreted it to be that maybe God has problems with the rich people. No, God don't have problems with rich people. What God is saying to rich people is very simple. First Timothy 1 17 to 18. God don't have problem with the rich people, but what this is what God is telling the rich people. First Timothy 6, 17, he said, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they not be high-minded, that is, they should not be proud, nor trust in or certain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. So this scripture is telling them that they should do good they should be good in good works, not just amassing money, but they should use that money to do good works. So that is the advice that God was trying to give to the God doesn't have problem with rich people. God doesn't have problem with people being rich. But what God is saying is that when you have when you have the money and you're going to do good with it, He said you should do good works. Not only that, your riches should be rooted in good work. They should be able to describe your riches and describe it in the times of good works that you do. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord will help you to do good as from this season in the name of Jesus. In fact, in Hebrew 10, Hebrew 10, 30, uh, 24, Hebrew 10, 24, he said, let us provoke one another to good work. Let us provoke one another. Who are you provoking to good work? <laughs> what good works are you doing to provoke another brother to do good work? He said, let us provoke one another unto love and good work. Hebrews 10, 24, unto love and good work. So we must be doing good. Our Lord Jesus Christ went about doing good, healing of those that are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. <clears throat> and let me put this one again. He said, in 1 Timothy 5, 15, he said, uh, 
He said, See that no render evil for evil. First Thessalonians 5 15. See that no render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourself and all men. He said, Follow that which is good, both among yourself and all men. Follow that which is good, both among yourself and all men. Follow that which is good. Both among yourself and all men. He said, Don't seek after revenge. Don't go after revenge. Don't render evil for evil, but do good. And even our Lord said it in one of the do good to those that hurt you. Do good to them. Pray for them. Those that curse you. Bible says, Bless them. So, Christmas is about doing good. One of the essence of Jesus coming to the world is to show us an example of how to be good. How to be good is that we should do good. And I pray the Lord will help us to be good people in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to jump here, you know, because I, I have so many things to say, but I will, I will jump this on the of time. Examples of doing good. I will give us examples. Because you may say, okay, what are the good, two good, good, two good, good, uh, 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 good things I need to do. Uh, what are the examples? Uh, let me give us some examples in the Bible. The Bible says, doing something for the less privileged is doing good. James 1 27. Doing something for the less privileged is doing good. James 1 27. It's a pure religion on the fall before God and Father is this to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and keep himself spotted from the world. You know, he said, visit the fatherless, the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself spotted from the world. You know, thank God to the glory of God, the church was able to help a student from primary school to pay for school fees from primary to university. Glory to God, she graduated in November. So if that is good work, helping people to, 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 that are in less situation. You know, as a church, we help uh, a pastor in Romania. We send some stipend to him every month. We've been doing this since 2015 till today. You know, he's in a kind of God. What we send is little God to him is very great. So doing good things, we, we love to do much, 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 much more than this, but we need the money to do it. As we speak now, like I have said, we have started doing it for another lady. In, uh, who is in primary school yet in uh, Uganda. So maybe you may be saying, oh, okay, well, good. Jo join us to do that good. And may God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another way of doing good is praying for those, praying for others. Praying for others is also doing good. You don't need to go and tell them, you know, I'm praying for you. Uh, it's not because of my prayer. This will not happen to you. This, will, this, this, the what you are testimony you share that day, it is my prayer that did it for you. No, that's not what we should do. Praying for others. Praying for others, it is good. It is prayer. In fact, one of the fastest ways to get your own prayer answered is to pray for others. Maybe if you want to doubt me, go and read, read Luke chapter 11, verses 5 to 11. Luke 11, verses 5 to 11. Bible told us the story of a man who went, they were asking Jesus questions about prayer, and he used this illustration to answer them. He went to another person and said, I have a visitor in my house, can you give me something to give? That one said, I'm tired, though. I can't give, come up, I can't wake up, I'm already in bed, so come back tomorrow. And that one said, no, I'm not going. And he kept on disturbing him until that man said, you know what, if I don't answer this man, I don't think I'll sleep tonight. So I might as well just get up and answer. And God used that to illustrate prayer for us. He used that to illustrate prayer for us. So he used that to illustrate prayer for us. So please, do good. There are people in the church. Some people maybe, I don't know, their situation may be immigration, it may be marital, it may be health. And you know about it, instead of judging, condemning, passing rumor, why don't you start praying about it for them? Let God take the glory. Let God take the glory. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. One of the ways of doing good is to pray for the leaders and those that are in authority. Pray for the prime minister. Pray for the royal uh, for the royal family. 
Pray for your pastor. Pray for those that are leaders. Pray for those that are the authority. Pray for your head of department. Pray for the ministers in the church. Pray, pray, pray for them. He's doing good. And not that you, like I said, not that you begin to pray for them, and then you begin to play it all over the last week, everybody, so that they will know that it's your prayer. You know, First Timothy 2, 1 to 3, we can read it. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. That will make us to know very clearly that when we pray, when we pray, and Bible says this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. When you do it, pray for leaders, pray for kings, pray for those that have authority. Bible says this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. And may God help us to do good in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a lady in the Bible. Her name is called Dorcas. You know, her name is called Dorcas, which is also maybe called, uh, I think her name is Tabitha, but which is also a meaning, uh, uh, okay, we have a Tabitha in the church, which is also Dorcas. This woman died. She was, but when she died, these are some of the things they said about her. In verse 76, I will read that. He said, Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and hands deep. Can we see that? She said she, she was full of good works. Not just one work, full of it and hands deep, which she did. I'm going to jump to verse. Uh, Verse 39. He said, and so they called Peter to come and pray for her. And Peter agreed. And Bible said, and then Peter arose and went with them. And when he came, they brought him into the chamber. All the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coat and garment which Dorcas has made while she was with them. So when Dorcas was alive, she was making clothes for, for elderly people. Sewing clothes for old people. You know, it was, she was doing all these things. And Bible says she was full of it. So when they called Peter to come and pray, all the elderly people are showing their Peter, this is what she has done for me. This is what she did for me. This is what she did for me. I want to submit that her good work brought her to life that day. Her good works brought her back to life that day. Because Peter had no choice than to pray for that woman to get up. So your good work, your good work can be the, 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 the thin line between what you are going through now and the breakthrough that the Lord has for you. So let, you don't know which of your good work, that day a good work spoke for her. And I pray, as we start as from today, your good work will begin to speak for you in Jesus' name. That woman, a good work spoke for her that day. Your good work will speak for you in Jesus' name. So the question is, when we talk about you, what good work do we have to do to you? How many marriages have you helped to resolve? How many people have been helped out financially? How many people that you went out of your way to advise, to help, without expecting anything in return? May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 9, 36 and 39. Acts chapter 9, verses 36. Or maybe no 39. We can read it all further. We we'll read it further. Because Peter prayed that day and that woman came to life. Another person, Bible told us in the Bible, example, Colenius, Colenius. He was not even a Christian. But Bible told us he was a man who was full of good works. He was full of good works. And Bible said his good work has come up to him as a memorial. His good work has come up to God as a memorial. His good work has come up to God as a memorial. I pray in the name of Jesus, your good work will speak for you in this new season in Jesus' name. So there's something about good work. And and you and God answering you. We can write down Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 2. Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 2. He said in verse 2, they say it was a devote man, that is Colonius, with all his house. He gave much out to them and, and prayed to God always. But in verse 5, the verse 5 is not there, but I want to add it. He said, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said, Thy prayers. And that hand has come up for a memorial before God. So what is what are you, what is the memorial that your prayer will take to heaven? 
We don't just pray, 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 pray. We must also, there must be something speaking on Abiyah, on, on a day of Joker, it was a good work that spoke for him. This guy too, Colonius, uh, his good work spoke for him. And I pray in the name of Jesus, we will do good works in Jesus' name. Amen. We will do good works in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in, in, the, uh, in the early days, in the days of the Bible, another point I want to add, Bible told us that in those times, the elderly people, the elderly people, the, the, the elderly women, when they get to age 65 or so, they usually bring them to home. The church will bring them to a home where they will take care of them. And they gave qualification of who should be. First Timothy 2, 9 to 10. First Timothy 2, chapter, uh, verses 9 to 10. First Timothy 2, 9 to 10. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. He said, these are the qualifications they gave. He said, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves with modest apparel, shame, shame, shame. Okay, no, this is not what I'm uh, trying to, I want to do. Okay, I think. Sorry, sir. Okay, let's leave it, let's leave it, let's leave it. I don't want to uh, uh, wait. But, okay, sorry, sorry, I will want that. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, 9 to 10. 1 Timothy 5, 9 to 10. Talking about the people they will accept into the widow, to the uh, house of the widow. They gave some criteria. We can read 1 Timothy 5, 9 to 10. Number one, they said, I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to the points down here. Number one, they must have brought up children, that is good children. Number two, they must have lodged strangers. They must have lodged strangers in their house. So these are the things they are going to be checking. Have you brought up children? Have you loved children? They, if she, they must have washed the saints' feet, that is, men of God, that, or women of God that pass through their area. They took care of them at some point. They checked. She must have relieved the people who are afflicted. She must have followed uh, diligently every good work. Maybe I should just read it. Let the widow be taken into the number under three scores. Oh, that is, they must be six year old before they are seven, having been wife of one man. Well reported of good works. If she has brought up children, if she has no stranger, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work. So we can see these are the conditions. In those days, in the early Bible days, they is they look, what are the good works this person has done. Today now can we look at you and say good works, except those just you and your family. That's why the Bible told us in Matthew 25 that when God comes, and though some people take it for that way, that well, once you are doing good work, you forget about the spiritual part. I mean, that would be a major misunderstanding of the scripture. That's a major misinterpretation. You have to still live by faith. You have to say, trust God and do good. You have to live by faith. So don't just say, because I'm doing good work, then I don't need to be holy. That would be a major misunderstanding, and I pray God will deliver. And the devil will not win in that person's life in Jesus' name. Amen. That will be a suggestion of the devil. That was that I just need to be doing good, that's fine. No, doing good is fine enough. Doing good and all, being, uh, having faith in God, they are together. So if you do if you do good work, you don't have faith, you are just like up and with feet, be gays and everything. I mean they do good work too. But the spiritual aspect is it there. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Now in rounding up, what are these? benefit of doing good work. Number one, if you do good, you will repeat. You will repeat. And how you repeat is irrelevant. How you repeat, it may not be the person you do it to. And that's why people make mistakes. Because when you do good to Brother A, you expect Brother A to fly you back. It may not be Brother A that will fly you back. It may be Sister D that will fly you back. It may be even sister D that you did nothing for that will come and recompense you. So when you are doing, don't do it expecting for them. Let God orchestrate it for you that you get back. 
Galatians 6, 9 to 10. Galatians 6, 9 to 10. He said, let us not be weary in well-doing. Can we see it again? For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. He said, in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Verse 10, he said, as we therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, not to only Christians. Not to only church members, my church members, to all men, especially those that are the household of faith. Now, that's where the little discrimination is allowed. He said, you should do it to all men, but especially, put, when you want to put it on hierarchy, put born again Christian. And may God help us in Jesus' name. So as you go, at this Christmas, ask yourself the question, am I, am I good? Am I good? If they look at me, what are the good works that we talk about? Maybe by the grace of God, next December, by the grace of God, we're going to be looking at everybody and be saying, what good works did you do this year? It don't have to be big money. It can be to cook for somebody. It can be to give clothes to somebody. It can be to follow somebody to an appointment. They cannot go down. You say, oh, you want to go to hospital? You are afraid. I will go with you to hospital. You do good work. I know that after you have done it, you are now to the whole world. That I'm the way from for me, this person, this will have happened. And may God help us to be people that do good work in Jesus' name. Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter 3, 12 to 13. Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 3, 12 to 13. He said, Now them, now them that are sought to command and exalt by the Lord Jesus Christ. That with quietness they walk and eat their own bread. But ye brethren, be not weary in doing good. Because sometimes it will be tiring. Especially when you are doing it for people, they don't reward you back. Maybe you are doing everything for people. Nobody even said thank you to you. Remember, you are not doing it for them, you are doing it for God. And I will say, if you don't get weary, if you don't give up, if you don't get tired, you are doing it as a spiritual sign so that you know as from today now when you do good, you are not doing it because so that people can say thank you. You are doing it for God. You are doing it for God. And God said, if you don't, if you are not willing, if you don't tired, if you will not, if you will reap your reward. And number two, he said, if you continue doing good, God will not forget you. If you continue doing good, God will not forget your work. Hebrews 6 10. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. <coughs> Hebrews 6 10. It says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards the state, in that you have ministered to the same and do minister. God is seeing every. If you have been doing good work, I want to say well done to you. I may not see you. People may not see you, but God is seeing you. And God is giving us a promise. He said, God is a sin for God to forget you. And God is not a sinner. So he said, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. You have been ministering to the same, and you are even still doing it. God will not forget you. Just have that in the back of your mind. Console yourself with that. That I will do good. Maybe things are not working very good for you, but in the midst of that, you look for somebody you can do good to. Because these things are the way of speaking at back for you. Acts, uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says, How Jesus Christ of Nazareth went about. Uh, sorry, how Jesus Christ of uh, how God anointed Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good. Healing those that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. If you, you can see that he, the doing good was put before the, the healing. Doing good was he put before the healing. Because if you want to really preach to somebody that is hungry, the best way to preach to that person is to first give them food to eat. When you give them food to eat, it will be easy for them to listen to you. They will listen to you very clearly. And may God help us in the name of Jesus. So I want us to enter this Christmas. Determine that you will do good. 
and the Lord will give you the grace to do good in Jesus' name. I want to just look us and then if we are going to pray in a minute, maybe you are hearing about what we are preaching right now. Maybe you are doing good, but you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you have been told that doing good is all you need to do. Please, you need to do more than that. You need to do more than do good. You need to also have Jesus. So the Bible says if you give everything to the world, but you do not have the love of God in you, the Bible says it's a waste of time. So you have to combine the two together. That is when you get a powerful combination. But let us be ask your, let us determine as from today that we are going to defend you. And may the Lord God bless you in Jesus' name. So if you are watching, you are not a Christian. Maybe you are watching, you are listening to me right now, and you are wondering why things are going the way they are going in my life. Maybe you need to be like Jesus. You need to be like Jesus to begin to do good. Every day, every living day, waking day, try to do good. You know, opening doors for somebody, uh, leaving your seat on the tram, on the bus, is doing good. Even the person you stand to leave your, give your seat up for will not say thank you. You know, personally, when I see elderly people, I give up my seat on the public transport. If I see a pregnant woman, I will give up my seat. Whether you say thank you or you don't say thank you, it doesn't matter to me. I will do it for you. I'm not doing it because of them. I am doing it because of God. And I know it to speak for me one day. And I pray for you. And I believe it has already been speaking for me already. And I pray that the name of Jesus, the same will happen to you in Jesus' name. Let us do good. Let us do good. And the Lord will bless you as you do good in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you because of Christmas. We thank you because of your mercy and your grace. We ask, Lord, that the ability, the grace to do good, that Lord will give to your children as from today in Jesus' name. The grace, the ability to do good, you give to your children as from today in Jesus' name. And as they begin to do good, Father, I pray for your children that they, they will be that good for them in Jesus' name. We know that you are not a sinner, God. You are not righteous to forget their name of God. And every good they do, it will not be forgotten in Jesus' name. For adventure, anyone is watching tonight, it is up to you. I pray that, Lord, that doesn't know you, I pray that you minister to them today. Let them give their life to you. And let their life never remain the same in Jesus' name. I pray for all our children that have ministered today. Bless them individually. Let this experience of today be permanent in their mind in the name of Jesus. Let it give them a conviction and a commitment to want to serve God for the rest of their life. That we will not lose these children to the world. That they will know God. They will know God. They will know God. They will know God. And I pray for all the children of everyone here that they will know God in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless you for the day. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, before I get off, before I get off, I hope I've not been disconnected yet. Before I go, I just want to make some quick announcements. Tomorrow.